Hey guys, and you're watching the Simsy Junior Sabbath School Show. Moving straight on to the cornerstone, the PowerPoint, both of the lessons. What lesson are you on? We are on lesson 11 for both PowerPoint and cornerstone books. As we run online, can we find the books? You can find the PowerPoint book at www.germpowerpoints.org and the cornerstone book at cornerstoneconnections.net. Hope you guys can go check that out. By the way, my name is Kennedy. And my name is Abby. The title for the PowerPoint lesson is A Thousand Years in Heaven. The prior text is found from Revelation 15 verses 2 to 3, and it says, And I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire, and those who have the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, and over the name, and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. They sing the songs of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb sang, Great and marvelous are your works, um, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. The PowerPoint says that we will praise God forever for his justice and mercy. Amen. Amen. The title for the course lesson is Jesus Calling. The key text is found from Luke 6, verses 12 to 13, and it reads, one of those days, Jesus went out to a mountain side to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them who he, who he also designed apostles. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And make sure you stay tuned for the PowerPoint and Cornerstone discussion. Abby for your intro. My name is Happy. My name is Emanuela. And my name is Michelle. We also do have a special guest here with us today. Can you please introduce yourself and also what you do? My name is Stephen Menu, and I'm a uh, physician at the Cleveland in the Cleveland Akron area, and I attend church at the Greater Cleveland SDA Church. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So now before we start our program, we're going to have Emmanuela pray for us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for allowing us to gather here today to speak about your word. Lord, I ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to speak through us. We are just human, so please give us an understanding so that we can help others to understand your word as well. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 So Hope TV does replay our videos on their satellites. Sundays at 12 p.m. and Tuesdays at 3 p.m. And then also CB Radio Ghana shows our videos, both Facebook and YouTube, every Monday, 7 o'clock p.m. EST. So next, our Bible verse of the day. Our Bible verse of the day is a Bible verse that we read throughout the week or Bible verse that we read throughout the lesson that we want to share with everyone. So mine is found from 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, and it says, This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light in him. There is no darkness at all. Amen. Amen. Mine is found from Colossians 3 verse 17. And it says, 
Everything you say and everything you do should be done for Jesus your Lord. And in all you do, give thanks to God the Father through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, and my say, mine is from Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to head into our PowerPoint part of the show. We're on lesson 11, and the title for the PowerPoint is A Thousand Years in Heaven. And the paratext is found from Revelation 5, verse 2 and 3. So now Emmanuel will give us a summary of the PowerPoint lesson. So this week's lesson talks about the uh, beautiful descriptions of um, heaven. And it goes on to say that even though in the Bible it talks about how, you know, heaven is so beautiful and this and this, we haven't really seen it. It even says in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, the eyes have not seen nor ear have heard like what is in heaven. So it goes on to explain that um, soon when Jesus comes, we'll be able to see heaven, see everything that is like going on, see what we have read about in the Bible. And um, it goes on to say that Christ and Satan are like fighting for our soul, fighting for, you know, us. And um, Christ wants salvation for us. So we have to like basically lean on him so that we'll be able to receive salvation. It goes on to say as well that, you know, there's many questions that we'll be able to ask Jesus when we finally get to heaven. When we get to heaven, we can ask him anything we'd like and be able to see him all the time and be living with him in heaven for a thousand years. And that's where the story ends. Thank you, Manuela, for your summary. So now we're going to head into our discussion, having Michelle and also Dr. Manu join us. So the first question for the PowerPoint discussion is, would you like to live in heaven with Jesus for a thousand years? If yes, what do you think it will be like? Um, yes, I would like to live with Jesus in heaven for a thousand years. And I feel like it would be like, as it says in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, that it would be a sight unseen. Like, I've never seen this before. And that's like crazy to me because there's so many things on this earth that I haven't seen, let alone in heaven. Um, I think it would, I yes, because I think it would be really nice and I'd be able to ask questions I've had. Mm -hmm. And then Dr. Manu, would you like to live in heaven with Jesus for a thousand years? And if yes, what would you think it would be like? That's a great question. Um, I absolutely would love to live in heaven for a thousand years with Jesus as as uh, as uh, we all you know, would like to someday. And um, what, what it, will it be like? To me, I think that the, the Bible tells us, gives us a little understanding of a, a glimpse of what it's going to be like. And Emmanuel you know, already told us that we, we can't even imagine what it's going to be like. But I, in my mind, I can see it perhaps maybe being like a big joyful celebration, you know, where we have, we have reason to be happy and to celebrate and to thank God for the good things he's done for us and to rescue us from this world of sin. You know, how the revelation describes of how we will sing songs of praise to God and we'll worship him and we will, it will be a, almost a perpetual singing and praising God and just being grateful and just celebrating um, who God is. And I think that's something that, that I, I, it's going to be like, you know, and I sometimes wonder to myself, why would God, give us you know this sort of a little glimpse and help let us know that it's going to be even more than our minds i think because it, it builds anticipation it, it makes it even bigger than it is when you when you've thought about something and then you know when you get there it's even bigger than it is it, it, there's something that goes beyond what you've been thinking and it's, it's such a beautiful thing to to have that anticipation um kind of build up while we are on this earth and so yes i'd love to be in heaven with jesus and yes i think it's going to be a huge celebration um, and I think it's going to be a, a wonderful experience. Thank you, Dr. Manny, for your answer. So next question for the PowerPoint discussion is, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 says, Eyes have not seen nor ear heard. Is it hard to wrap your head around this concept? Yes, it is kind of hard to wrap my head around this concept. As I said before, it's like, there's so many things on this earth that I have yet to see. Like I've mostly just been in America and even in America, I haven't seen so many things. And even scientists, there's so many things that they're unable to discover because they don't have the technology to do so. So let alone like all of that, set that aside. And there's even more in heaven that I have yet to see. It's just crazy to me. But knowing that the God that we have and he was able to make all of this is not as surprising because I follow a great God. 
um yes i think it is hard to understand this but um if you continue to read it um it kind of explains a little bit more that what's gonna be in heaven um that nobody's ever seen it or heard it on this earth and then dr menu i'm already like read the uh, bible verse but do you think it's hard to wrap your hand wrap your head around the concept yeah, I think it. I, I agree with the, uh, that it, it is hard because, you know, we're humans here and, and Paul tells us that we look through a darkened glass, you know. And so, yes, it's very difficult for us to imagine because we just are limited as humans. Um, you know, even here on Earth, we still haven't been able to see some of the great things in the oceans, you know, how much have we really seen in the ocean? You know, maybe, you know, you live in, in, in Cincinnati, how much of Cincinnati have you truly seen, you know? Maybe at home and maybe a little bit of the city, but there's so much to see. Um, now extend that you know, to the entire world, extend it to the entire universe, uh, extend it into heaven. Now, certainly you and I and, and myself, I can say myself for sure, I can't even imagine what it's going to be like. I think um, it is difficult to wrap our minds around it and, and, it's, and it makes me want to even get there even the more so I can actually experience it. Thank you for your answer. So uh, from our comments, Ernest said, it will be a great day for me to see Christ and live with him in the thousand years. God bless you guys. Keep it up. Thank you. God bless you too. So next question for the PowerPoint discussion is, what questions do you have at the moment that you're excited to ask Jesus in heaven? Um... Well, there's like a lot of questions that I wanted to ask Jesus, but like one question that I would have is just like, what, okay, I don't know how to put this into words basically, but like, it's like, <laughs> what pushed him to actually like be on this earth and like sacrifice for us? I mean, I understand that it was his love, but like, it's just hard for me to wrap it around. Like, you know, he actually came on this earth and sacrificed his life for us. Like, why would he do such a thing? Because us humans, you know, it's very hard for us to understand that because we wouldn't do that for somebody else. So I want to like actually hear his point of view because all of us have made up an answer saying that, you know, it's because of his love for us. But I want to hear it from his actual mouth. Like, why would he do something for that? Like that for us. Um, I also have a lot of questions I would like to ask, but something I'd really like to ask is um how he felt when judas betrayed him and how he feels when we disobey him mm -hmm. and then uh dr Manny, do you have any questions at the moment you're excited to ask jesus in heaven yeah i lots and lots of questions that i uh, that i would love to ask him and perhaps one question i, would, I want to ask him is what was the food like when he was on earth compared to the one in heaven you know, see what is expected on that. But you know, to be on, but on a more serious note, I think I would love to ask him what it was like um, to to lay down his life um, for human beings, and to and and what was the experience like where he had left human, he 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 left heaven and put aside uh, being God and became human. How what was that experience like? You know, we know in and during during the Gethsemane when he was about to be crucified, he. He went through a lot of pain. I think, and I would like to ask him what it was like, and um, and uh, what what I can, and how how he felt about that whole experience, and why he did that. I think that was something I want to ask him about. Thank you for your response, and also to our viewers, don't forget you are part of our discussion. So anything that is um, talked about in the discussion, you can also answer in the comments, and I will answer them and also read them. Also, uh, to our viewers. What questions are you excited to ask Jesus in heaven? So the last question for the PowerPoint discussion is, in the story, it says that there will be people we didn't expect to see and people missing that we did expect to see. What does that mean to you? Um, this means to me that not all people that I think are going to go to heaven are going to go to heaven. Um, there's like elders. There may be elders that I may think that, oh, I'm going to see them in heaven or family members, or pastors, or many people that I may think because of their status in life, because they're a pastor, because they're an elder, they're going to be in heaven because of course they live a good life. But next thing you know, I go to heaven and I don't see them there. Or maybe people that I think, you know, I've seen them do this, 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 and that. So of course they won't be able to come to heaven. But next thing you know, I will see them in heaven, which shows that just because the things that I have seen 
makes me think that this will make them go to heaven. That's be behind closed doors. They could be doing other things that I don't even know about. Um, I also agree with what she just said, that there could be people in your church who look and act religious, but act differently when there's nobody around. And there are also people who you see and the things they do, you know, aren't right, but they end up in heaven. And then Dr. Menu, in a story it says there will be people in heaven we didn't expect to see and people missing that we didn't expect to see. What does that mean to you? You know, to me, that tells me that um, I should not judge other people when I meet them um, because I cannot read other people's minds and I cannot meet, read other people's hearts. Um, and so I need to be very careful when I'm interacting with people because I don't know um, who is going to go to heaven, who's going to go to, who's not going to go to heaven. Um, that's going to be something that God himself is going to decide. But ultimately, I realize that um, I cannot judge people um, on this earth. I must let God himself be the one who molds my heart so I can live life in unity with everyone who on earth here. So when we go to heaven, we'll continue to live together in harmony and in peace. Thank you, Dr. Manu, for your answer. And also thank you to Michelle and Emanuela for you guys' responses. Now we are going to move on to our riddle for this week. So today's riddle is, this is more than a double triangle. It interwines both the external and internal dimensions of God. Israel and the Torah. What is it? So I'll read it one more time. Listen carefully. This is more than a double triangle. It interwines both the external and internal dimensions of God, Israel, and the Torah. What is it? So I'll say this answer at the end. Okay, so I hope our viewers were listening to be able to answer the riddle towards the end. So now we're going to um, head into our cornerstone part of the show. We're also on lesson 11 for the cornerstone and the title is Jesus Calling. And then the key text is found from Luke chapter six, verse 12 and 13. So now Michelle will give us a summary of the cornerstone lesson. Um, so the cornerstone is about when Jesus is talking to a crowd and he's telling them about the Beatitudes and that those who um, follow the Beatitudes and the word of the Bible what they get and those who disobey what happens to them. Thank you, Michelle, for your summary. So now we're gonna head into our discussion having Emanuela and also Dr. Manu join us. So the first question for the cornerstone is, what is your understanding of the Beatitudes? Um, the Beatitudes, they like tell you like, so if you're like humble and you don't, you aren't out there, you aren't rude to people. And, and if you're suffering, it tells you what happens when you get to heaven. And it tells those who are impolite and those who think they're above others, what happens to them when they, when Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. um, I see the Beatitudes like, I wouldn't say 10 commandments, but that's basically like what it is. It's like, telling you what you should live by tells you that you know the poor in heart you know shows that even if you're not high up there you will end up getting a reward in heaven so you don't have to be all like prideful and and doing all this and doing all that as michelle was saying because you will end up getting a reward in heaven mm -hmm. and then uh dr manu what is your understanding of the beatitudes yeah you know just like uh, michelle and Emanuela have already said um, the Beatitudes, in my mind, speak of love and tell us how to live our life in, uh, of love. And um, they're sort of a summary of the, of the, of the, of the uh, commandments of God. Um, the Bible says that God is love, and, and the Beatitudes is, is a way for us to uh, learn how to love our neighbor as ourselves and also to love the Lord our God as well. So to me, the Beatitudes, the way, another way to put the Beatitudes is, is how to love. Thank you for your answer. So the next question for the Cornerstone discussion is, Jesus said, if someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. What does that mean to you? Um, to me, I just like to think it as of, if somebody slaps you or does something against you, you shouldn't retaliate against them. 
Yeah, I would agree with um, Michelle. You don't have to, like, it doesn't necessarily mean if somebody slaps you on one side, turn your other cheek and let them slap you again. But it's saying that, like, if somebody does something onto you, you shouldn't become upset and then try to get revenge or try to do something back. But instead, you know, be calm about it. And think, like, in situations where you don't know what to do, just think, like, what would Jesus do? If he was in this situation, what would he do? And then, Dr. Mandy, Jesus said if someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to the other also. What does that mean to you? To me, it, it, it means that we must have the spirit of forgiveness. Um, that is, in this world, you're always going to sometimes come in conflict with other people. Um, but because he's taught us to love each other, we must learn to forgive. And to forgive um, other people uh, when they do you wrong is very difficult, but we are asked to do it because it is a commandment that we are to live by because it is going to make us stronger Christians and stronger people um, in the long run. Thank you for your answer. So next question for the Cornerstone discussion is, what would the world look like if people actually abided by the Beatitudes? Um, I think the world would be very peaceful. Um, there wouldn't be any fights, any bombings, any wars. Yeah, I agree. There wouldn't be like much chaos. There wouldn't be people who are fighting, you know, trying to get dirt or something against you so that they can get a higher position. The world be would become very much peaceful than it is at the moment. And then uh, Dr. Manu, what would the world look like if people actually abided by the Beatitudes? Yeah, I agree, you know, the world would be a much better place for sure. It would be a place where there will be peace and there will be joy and there will be understanding. Um, and I also, um, you know, believe that it's going to be a little heaven. It would be like a mini heaven, you know, on earth. We would have a small heaven over here if we were able to live by those realities. Now, hopefully people in heaven don't slap each other. Um, maybe hopefully people in heaven don't, you know, insult each other and turn the other cheek, you know. But we do know that um, if only we are able to... Um, you know, live a life that's dedicated to Christ, we are certainly going to be um, a little, live in a, a little heaven right here on earth. Thank you for your answer. And the last question for the Cornerstone discussion is, can we as humans on this earth live up to the principles that Jesus preached about on the mountain? Um, honestly, I don't think so. I don't think anybody can live up to that, but I think we could use that as an example for ourselves. Yeah, I agree with Michelle. Because we are human, it's hard for us to abide by the Beatitudes. Sometimes we want to be reaching a higher status in life, so we want to do other things. But um, in order to actually abide by the Beatitudes, we can, you know, ask Jesus for help. Ask God, you know, pray about it. Ask him to help you so that you can actually abide by the Beatitudes. So as we said in the um, past question, it can bring peace on earth. And then lastly, Dr. Manu, can we as humans on this earth live up to the principles that Jesus preached about on the mountain? Yeah, you know, as we've already said, it's it's a very high uh, goal to reach for sure, and one that can be very, very challenging. But, you know, the scriptures tell us that um, God is able to give us the power to live lives that are, that, are, that are according to his word. You know, he says he's able to present you faultless before his glory with exceeding joy. And so, you know, these, these principles were laid aside so that we can ask the Holy Spirit to give us the power be able to live that kind of a life. It is very, very difficult. No questions asked about that. But the Christ, but Christ has said that He will give us the power to do that. Um, if only we will ask of Him. Thank you, Dr. Manu, for your answer. And also thank you to Michelle and Emanuela for you guys' answers. Next, Dr. Manu, can you give us a moral lesson that you got from the PowerPoint and the Cornerstone discussion? I think the, mo the moral point that I, I took from this is that we are on a journey on this earth. And that is we are going from a world where there's much chaos. Uh, into a beautiful heavenly kingdom where there is much joy and there's much celebration. And therefore, I must do everything that I can in this world to get to that heaven. I must live a life that is in accordance to the scriptures, that, that, that speaks of love, that speaks of kindness, that speaks of joy. Um, and if someone on this earth makes me upset, maybe I should learn to forgive them um, and realize that uh, I, I shouldn't go around judging other people because we are all humans trying reaching very hard to reach the heavenly throne which Christ has come to die for us, we can also get to that place as well. Now we'll go back to our riddle for today. So the riddle says, again, I'll read it again. This is more than a double triangle. 
It interwines both of the external and internal dimensions of God, Israel and the Torah. What is it? So, what do you guys think it is? Um, that's a good riddle. Uh, it's like an object? Basically, I guess. No? Basically. Mm -hmm. What is it? <laughs> so you know what it is. Um, I... Maybe... It's more than a double triangle. The Godhead three and one? It interwines the external and internal dimensions of God, Israel, and the Torah. The Torah. The Bible? Jewish. The Torah. No. <laughs> Dr. Manu, do you have any answers for today's riddle? Wow. <laughs> 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 That's a tough one. I'm not sure if I have the answer for it. Um, could it be talking about the Bible? Um, it, it's hard. Um, maybe yeah, heaven? I'm not sure. <laughs> That's a tough one. Yeah, I have no idea. You guys have no idea. So the answer... Do you guys really want me to say the answer? Yes. Have no idea? The double triangle. If you put... Okay, I'll just say it again. Um, it's the Star of David. <laughs> no, Torah. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, thank you to everyone who uh, contributed to the riddle. So before we end our show, Dr. May, can you please close out with a closing prayer? Let's pray. Father God, we're thankful for the lesson you've given us this uh, this day that we're able to um, learn that you are a God of love and you are a God who has prepared a beautiful place for us in heaven and that you longed for us to come join you. And so I pray that, Father, you will uh, continue to bless us and keep us safe in you. And even while we're on this earth, help us to love one another. Help us to uh, walk by your side faithfully. Um, may we always recognize you as God and as the one that we are to trust. Help us to stay away from the evil of this world and bless us, bless our families, bless our, our friends, our homes. And may we always be faithful to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So thank you all for joining us. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to our channel. You can find us on YouTube at Cincinnati Gunman SDA Church. Make sure I see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>